Welcome to AC motor control and as you can see I've done away with the BLDC motor and I've got my first induction motor and I'd like to show you something really <laughs> show you something really cool just before we get started it's a 220 volt motor and it's a high RPM motor so Got this hooked up to good old ugly Betty. Now, I want you to notice something. I've got this on 36 volts, three SL8 batteries, and they're not even fully charged. They're about 12 volts, you know, they're not half dead or anything. What kind of speed do you reckon we can get out of this little induction motor? It's not been rewound, it's, it's completely standard. Let's have a little look. So this is my little drive topology I've been talking about. No PWM, no field oriented control. It's, it's got a, a take on field oriented control, but Nice. Cable to the inverter. Sorry about the focus. And just so you can see, um, positive rail through the light bulb ballast protection into there, and negative. Da -da 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 -da. Got the hiccups. Cool, huh? Just wanted to show you that, just to get you a bit excited. And for the tutorial, we're going to go back to the basics, back to where we were at the last uh, IGBT firing sequences and start looking at software. So let's get on with this. Just wanted to show you that because it was pretty cool. I mean, Honestly guys, that's running on 36 volts, 3 12 volt SLA batteries. Welcome back guys. Right. Let's have a look at this. Got our Arduino sketch. Okay, so we're sensing on A0. That's our pot. So we can adjust the pot up and down. We've got six integer. Oh my goodness, what's the wrong of my words? Values. Variables. Six integer variables. <laughs> my dear, oh dear. Right. Pin 13, 12, 11, 10, and 9, and 8. I'll take a picture of that in a minute so you can see. Um, and you can notice we've got bottom left, bottom right, middle left, middle right, top left, top right. Now that, I've named them, so as I'm looking at the inverter, you know those six lights from the other video? Well, that's the middle right light, that's the top right light, 
and that's the bottom left light so it's easier to program in you see I've, I've done it down here so what this program does it um it stores oh, excuse me it stores the sensor value from pin A0 it analog reads it from sensor pin which is A0 up here and then it saves it to this variable called sensor value so that's just a variable and then you can see I'm taking the sensor value variable and dividing it by 4 so on the very slowest setting on this it was ridiculously slow because it goes up to 1024 or something because it's a 10 bit ADC so um obviously if I if I divide that by 4 it's giving me more like giving me more like 250 260 something like that which is still pretty slow so it really is this simple this this is what you would call the simplest method it's open loop it's not really useful for anything except really driving a motor um, for a fan or something like that but you need to know this to, to get a starting point so all this is doing is switching some pins up and down the reason if you're going to try this at home make sure you put all the lows first because it's sequential because it runs sequentially so it'll shut all the pins off before it makes some high so you won't get any any crossovers so it'll do that then it'll do that, then it'll do that, then it'll do that, then it'll do that, then it'll do that. Does that make sense? So you don't want it to go high whilst in the last one, this one was high. So you don't want middle left and middle right both high at the same time, otherwise that could cause a short. So just make sure you put your high ones on last. So you see you've got your two, your six steps. So bottom right high, middle left high, if you go back to the other video where I showed you the white lights flashing and I played the plinky plonky piano music so if you follow this along that actually follows that sequence and if you wanted to reverse the motor you would do it in a reverse sequence just like I showed you in the video I think it was video 3 and 4 IGBT firing sequences so that's basically your six steps that's your last one and it goes back to the first one bottom right top left and then bottom right middle left and so as you can see as you there's a delay in between so there's a delay sensor value as you turn up the pot as you make the ADC value climb so does the delay value so it'll do this slow so the higher the delay value the slower it will step to each sequence so this is as basic as it gets really easy to try at home like, I've typed this in by hand, copied and pasted this in about 10 minutes. No problems at all. Um, this won't give you anything useful, but it's it's a start, and I'll, I'll show you this in action now. Okay, so, I've got a little pot. I'm on one of the SLA batteries, and as I move the pot, it steps faster and faster. It runs very rough. There's no feedback on it. I don't know if you can hear that. And you might be able to see it. It's kind of stepping. And you can see the amount of current I'm drawing. So, as I pick this up to speed, I'll make this go a bit faster. That's where it wants to be. So, yeah, literally as you change your pot value you just make it go faster and slower so this is at a constant 12 volts you'll notice at very low voltages it doesn't want to it wants to draw more current 
at low speeds, but if I increase the RPM, there we go, if I increase the RPM, it draws no current at all, that's where it looks to be. And if we up this to 36 volts, right, now you can hear it's not happy at all, it's, it's drawing loads of current. See how awful the control is. But once it's set at a speed, it, it tends to stay there. You know, very inefficient. I mean, it doesn't draw a great deal of current, but that's on your 36 volts with this topology. And yeah, so as you can see, what I want you to see from this is that although we're although we're having a successful drive, it's really not all that good. And um, We've got no varying voltage or varying time time base, so I can slow down the frequency. But now the current draw is huge because we really need to be lowering the voltage. And you can see there's a bit of um sort of digital step between between the uh, as I turn the part. It's very sort of digital, isn't it? You can hear, listen. I think that's where it wants to be on 36 volts in this topology because we're drawing next to no amps now. It's not even making that glow. So, um, yeah, it does work, but we can turn down the frequency a bit very quick to react so here we are now don't worry too much about this this is really just to show you you won't be manually changing the frequency like this the frequency is actually going to be changed in software and we'll look into that in the next video um, but yeah give that a go yourself tell me how you get on you'll learn a lot if you try this yourself and I'll see you guys next week when we're going to look at um, closed loop systems and the next one should be actually usable in a car and um, before long I think after that, when I get that done, I'm going to build an actual real life motor controller, not this toy one. I think this has done its job. Well, I might put this up to the big motor next week and have a little play. We'll see. <laughs> anyway guys, have a nice week and I'll see you next weekend.